It's time once again for That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly. That Business Show gives a voice to Tampa Bay's entrepreneurial community and highlights our community leaders aiming to inspire and educate our listeners. Become a part of the entrepreneurial movement today by becoming a member of the Tampa Bay Business Owners and get your brand on air today. Visit tampabayradio.com for more information. All shows available on demand. Now, here are your hosts, Jamie and Kelly. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. This show's on here live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., so we thank all the uh, listeners out there on the uh, radio waves and out there on the uh, podcasting uh, platforms. We're all over the place now on social media as well. Join in the studio, Kelly Wilson, owner of the Edge Business Community and the Edge Business Magazine. Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning. Happy and Thursday. Happy Thursday. One episode Thursday. short of episode 500. Tomorrow will be 500 uh, shows of That Business 500? Show. 500, yes. Oh, it's been 100 weeks. 100 weeks, five 500. shows a year. That's easy math, right? 500 yeah, yeah. Right well, there. congratulations. That's exciting. What a way to like, like end the, the new year yeah, or the week old 100, year. 100, yes. It's just <laughs> ironic that it ended on week 100 of this year. So. so any big plans for the rest of the week as you get ready for 2017? No, no, I mean, it is New Year, so I'm sure something will come up. But yeah, I'm not a, I'm not too much for planning. It's just I kind of play it by ear, so we'll see. But a lot of stuff going well, on. Well, you do as far as for the next year and your plans and yeah, strategies well, you know me. for I'm the never, new year. I'm never at a loss for finding some stuff to work on. So this is I'll true. find something to work on or plan for, so we'll see. But we got a good show yeah, uh, planned do. for this uh, segment. We're going to be talking about an inspirational uh, story here with uh, Jamal Anderson. He is the author of The Best Bet, alongside Ernest Hooper, who's a longtime columnist and editor of the Tampa Bay Times. Many people may remember uh, Jamal Anderson, who played uh, football at Hillsborough High and then went to uh, school and fell into some uh, issues with uh, gambling and kind of derailed his career. But he's uh, been back on track for uh, many uh, years now and is a youth minister, so he's going to be sharing his uh, story with us today. So I'll begin with Ernest, who uh, remembers covering him back in Hillsborough High in the uh, early 90s. So Ernest, kind of lead us into this story. Hey, good morning. So, um, yeah, I started my career covering high school sports and really got a lot of joy out of that. And uh, uh, one of the players who left an indelible impression was Jamal Anderson. Uh, He was a standout running back and, and a player who was heralded even before he got into high school. Uh, we used to have junior high sports in Hillsborough County, and uh, there was a buzz about Jamal uh, even before he started playing high school sports. And uh, in large part, he lived up to the hype and, and had a standout career. And um, kind of how we came about the title, uh, The Best Bet, it's obviously double entendre, but I remember uh, we did a, a special section to kick off the season in his senior year. And we had Jamal with some other running backs. And out of all those running backs, Jamal was the best bet. Um, He had the best grades. He had the most talent uh, and and certainly embodied the the greatest potential. So, um, and then um, things kind of spiraled in another direction after he went to Boston College. We reconnected a few years ago, and he shared with me that he wanted to tell his story uh, in in an effort to, uh, to help kids who are coming through the system today to, to give them a cautionary tale about what not to do. And now, you're the author of the book behind uh, Jamal Anderson. You kind of wrote the book well, together. I'm, I see I'm your name's on together. there, too. Yeah, <laughs> so. I'm the quilter. Quilter, okay. Uh, Jamal gave me some terrific patches. I mean, we from know his, he could write, so you know you got to call you up when yeah. you got something to write. So he gave me some terrific patches from his life. He did some of the writing, and uh, essentially what I did was kind of quilted those patches together and, and created uh, something of a seamless story. And this book, The Best Bet, available in uh, Barnes & Nobles as well as Amazon, also a Facebook page set up for it at the uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash The Best Bet. Let's uh, throw it over to uh, Jamal Anderson, who is the, uh, who's the focal point of this book. And so, Jamal, tell us a little bit about, you know, you coming out of high school, you're a football star, you go up to Boston College, and why why was football not front and center? You fell into gambling and issues. Yeah, I, I uh, got, got sidetracked uh Early, uh, my freshman year, we sort of got into, uh, you know, uh, we call ourselves the the nine nine because we graduated. All of us were supposed to graduate uh, nineteen ninety nine, and sort of fell in instead of becoming instead of being a leader, I you know became a follower, and started doing a lot of things that I just saw guys doing. You know, uh, <laughs> got involved with credit cards, uh, and you know, and that led into just being suspended off campus, 
And just one thing led into another, and next thing you know, I was in this full-fledged gambling scandal, you know. And you said uh, some of your friends were connected to even the mob uh, uh, people involved. I mean, I don't know if you were directly connected yourselves, but, I mean, you were in this pretty deep then, correct? Yeah, well, the bookies were. You know, there were some bookies that were connected, um, and, you know, there were some uh, some long ties there, you know, even going back to, uh, you know, to the basketball scandal. Yeah, 1980s, before, yeah, with my uh, my friend before. Jim, by the way, Jim Sweeney, who's been on the uh, program before. So I, it's just ironic, you know, because I, when I initially saw the story, I, I thought they were linked, but then you were in the 90s, and that that scandal was back into the uh, 1980s. So you were immediately gripped by, you know, uh, the involvement in gambling your freshman year. What became of your football career? Well, not my freshman year. My freshman year, um, you okay. Know, now it's your freshman. Year. When did it? Then when did it grip you? Uh, I didn't get in, get involved in gambling until my sophomore year. Okay. I, uh, my freshman year, I was able to uh, show some potential. I actually, uh, played against Syracuse, scored my first touchdown. Uh, also played against Temple, so I got some very significant playing time and showed some really flashes of greatness. But uh, you know, and, and that's why I guess the gambling scandal was such a heartbreak because people was able to see. I see flashes of me. I made the paper in my first scrimmage. They, they knew what your potential was. Yeah, and exactly. they, they saw what road you were going down. It's, you know, I would think, you know, and just, you know, having grown up myself and, you know, when you're younger, you you know, it's it's hard. I would think in peer pressure, I mean, I knew, I thought I knew everything at 18. You couldn't tell me anything. I became a mother, you know, <laughs> and at that point, you know, I remember people trying to talk to me and tell me things, and I thought I had all the answers. And it's really funny. Here I am in my 40s, and I realize I didn't know anything then. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we discuss in the book that, it can happen to you, you know, just because you're coming out of high school and you're Harold and you're the player of the year and, and you got life by the tail, uh, figuratively speaking, you know, it, you know, if you don't stay focused, you know, you can lose it all, you know. So and that's that's one of the um, the word, you know, what, advice that we give. You know, an athlete's going to say, <laughs> you know, an athlete's going to say, oh, gambling. I mean, that's not going to affect me on the field. It's not like I'm taking drugs or abusing alcohol. I mean, how did gambling <laughs> affect your your play on the field? Well, it, it it didn't affect my play on the field because at the time I was actually uh, I took a medical red shirt. Um, my Which means what? I got injured my freshman year, okay. and so that meant I, I played as a true freshman. So I still had another uh, year of eligibility to really just sit out. And so I took a medical red shirt because I blew out my ACL in the spring of my freshman year. So going into my sophomore year, this was my first time never playing football. You know, so I was, you know, I was alienated already all on the wrong track, you know. So, uh, like I said, getting involved with credit card fraud and things of that nature uh, was suspended off campus. So I was already on a track uh, for disaster and, and, and getting involved. But gambling just made it even worse. So how did you fall into gambling as a problem? I mean, a lot of us have been to a casino and thrown some money away at a, at a table. But how did it go from just, you know, night out to casino or, you know, a credit card to, you know, a full-fledged problem? Well, there, there was an appeal. Uh, the appeal was uh, no credit check, you know. Um, <laughs> you didn't have to put any money down. Uh, and, and, you know, being 18, 19, knowing a lot about college football, you know, I was that was like my, my second major in a sense, you know. So... I felt comfortable, I uh, knew the game, and so here was an opportunity to make money or uh, to get another rush because you know I wasn't playing football, so another chance to experience a high five experience, you know, and and uh, the first time I got involved with gambling, I won, I won a, I won a $75 bet. And from there, it was just like, you know, just wanted another and another. So, you know, I felt I was missing that rush, that high, you know, and, and gambling uh, was sort of temporarily fulfilling it. Ernest, what did you notice uh, with uh, Jamal when he went off to uh, college, uh, and when did you reconnect with him? Well, um, we didn't reconnect until maybe two or three years ago, and um, in the process of writing the book, I actually apologized to Jamal because when the headlines hit and when he got in trouble, uh, I should have been a person who tried to reach out to him back then, back in 1996, and, and ask, uh, how can I help? And I didn't. But um, I've gotten a second chance now, and, uh, and I'm appreciative of that and appreciative of him giving me the opportunity to help tell his story. What are some of the takeaways from the book and some of the things that you learned as, you know, an ass assisting writer in the book here? Well, um, I think um, this is my first book, and um, essentially I'm what they like to say a ghost writer. And I think what Jamal and I discovered is that it's really important if you're uh, endeavoring on this kind of project to sit down and talk to each other, not to, to go beyond just communicating through email or 
or him sending me passages that he wants to include in the book. Um, we uh, sat down. You kind of uh, need to connect even on a more, more of a, you know, more of a more higher level, however you would say that. Yes, really kind of yes, connect on, and really on, get to on, know. A, on a deeper level, right. I would deeper, say. Deeper, that's the word. And um, we, we had uh, several uh, gatherings at uh, a little coffee shop in Ebor called Trey Amici at the Bunker. And, and there, uh, not only was I able to learn more about his story, but get a sense of his voice. Um, you know, when, when you're, as I say, stitching these patches together, it's important that I understand the, the kind of words he likes to use, the, the way he expresses himself. Um, and, and I think it also just, you know, writing is cathartic. And it, and it was for him. And I think he wrote more as we went along in the process because it helped him um, kind of realize where he had been. And uh, that, I don't want to take words out of your mouth, Jamal, but I think there's some healing that came from. Yeah, Jamal, if you want to elaborate project. on what uh, Ernest is uh, saying there, go ahead. Exactly. You know, and I got to interject because, you know, Ernest, I, I, I couldn't have done this without Ernest. Ernest um, was a master uh, at, at getting information out of me. And he and, and and he really cared. It showed that he actually d just didn't care about the story, but he actually cared about you know uh, me as an individual. Uh, so, but definitely he he was able to we was able to come together and 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 really bring out some stuff that uh, I don't think I was you know I couldn't see myself telling the story to nobody else. You know I really trusted Ernest uh, even in high school. You know when I transferred from Jefferson to Hillsboro, uh, Ernest was the person that wrote that story. So. Uh, we you know we go back and there was definitely a connection, a definitely a bond, uh, and he was able to definitely uh, bring out some stuff in me that I would have never said to anyone. You know, he just he made me go down some paths and re recollect some some memories uh, that that played a part. Of, you know, the story that I would have never thought about. Who know? is this book, The Best Bet, written for today? Who can benefit from this mostly? Uh, student athletes and student athletes that have gone through heartbreak as well and, and, that, and that are trying to move on with their life and trying to still find value uh, in their mess, in a sense, you know, because a lot of times uh, they want to throw you away. You know, uh, you know, you, you made a mistake and, you know, people think there's nothing for you to do, but actually kids can value from your story there's, there's there's still value even in you know your heartbreak you know yeah and as i say you don't want regrets either you know you want to be able to look back and put some closure to some things and realize that i i don't i believe everything truly does happen for a reason so if anything maybe your your reason is to be beneficial to others to really be that voice in the young ones today to mm -hmm. keep them on path and and to help them prosper. Again, currently talking to uh, Jamal Anderson and Ernest Hooper about the uh, book The Best Bet, which is the story of uh, Jamal's uh, football career, going from a high school football star uh, to uh, having some problems with uh, gambling and credit card debt in uh, college, and then uh, rebounding and becoming a, a youth minister and a community leader. And we'll talk about the uh, that stage of his life when we uh, come back from the break. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. If you've been following that business show on Facebook and Twitter, you may have noticed the quality of some of our images. That's because one of our sponsors is pro photographer Rick Taseda, a member of the Professional Photographers of America. You can view his extensive work by going to his website at RickTaseda.com or call him for an appointment to chat about your photography needs at 813-641-4757. That's 813 -641 Four seven five seven. Rick Tosseda Visuals. Call him for your next event or project. Reason number 12 why you should own a Thermospas hot tub? They require no attachment to your home's plumbing. Thanks to the Thermospas unique built-in thermofiltration system that filters the water an incredible 144 times a day, you simply fill it with a garden hose and your water stays crystal clear with very little maintenance. Call to receive a free DVD and brochure and find out how you can own a Thermospas hot tub for only a few dollars a day. Right now, they're offering 0% APR financing with approved credit and a $1,000 savings coupon, including free delivery, free chemicals, and a cash discount. 
And with bottles starting at $4,995, there will never be a better time to own a Thermospas hot tub. So call now and ask about this limited time offer. Call Thermospas today at 800-991-5668 for your free DVD and brochure. That's 800-991-5668. Thermospas, hot tubs designed to improve your life. Call 800-991-5668 today to take advantage of 0% APR financing. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-664-2871 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-664-2871 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-664-2871. Savvy business owners utilize technology to connect with customers, communicate among teams, and collaborate with partners. Even with advances in technology, you all know it's not infallible. Where do you turn when your technology starts working against you? Who do you depend on to keep your team productive? Don't wait until your technology fails you. Get ahead of the crisis and contact the professionals at Alpha Computing Solutions so they can show you how to keep your technology running smoothly. Visit them online at www.alphacomputing.com. Who doesn't have a smartphone these days? And of course, there's an app for everything. Well, almost everything. That's why the folks at Popcorn Apps started developing mobile applications. They saw people like you with genius ideas, unable to make those thoughts a reality. They develop applications for tens of thousands of dollars less than you'll find anywhere else and will turn your idea into a reality in a matter of just a few months. Think you're not ready? Think again. They are your one-stop shop for mobile application development. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn. Or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million-dollar business and a world changer starting today. Good morning. Traffic moving well on the Bay Area bridges. No delays to report on the Howard Franklin Bridge. 275 moving well through downtown Tampa. Same goes for I-4 and I-75. Crash on 50th Street. Southbound direction near the Summit Expressway still has the right lane blocked there. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson, New York, Hillsboro. Traffic tip line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Reminding you to enjoy your time with friends and family enjoy the tailgate party but whatever you do drive sober or get pulled over Patchy, dense fog, then partly sunny, high 78. A cold front late this afternoon brings a 20% rain chance, turning chilly, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny, high 65. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Miss the show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here are your hosts, Jamie and Kelly. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly where business becomes show business. In studio with Ernest Hooper and Jamal Anderson talking about the book The Best Bet which is available in storefronts at Barnes & Noble as well as Amazon and it's a story of a uh, Jamal Anderson's uh, football career going from a high school football star to uh, having some issues with gambling and credit card debt in college and then coming out and now being a community leader as a youth minister. So, Jamal, what was the turning point in college or after college? What what turned your life around? Well, just uh, the heartbreak, you know, the heartbreak, the experience of going through it, um, just realizing I need to get back to uh, to my roots. And, you know, and, and, and I got to be honest, Jamie, you know, it's, it's, it's been a struggle, you know, um, uh, haven't hasn't, haven't been perfect. There's been times that I, you know, battle depression and things of that nature, and and so you know, writing this book has really been a form of closure for me to really uh, enter in my ministry and, and, and on a on a clean slate and really, you know, help some kids and tell my story. You know how I felt even in ministry. You know, how long did you play football at Boston College? Did you make it all four years, or did it your career end earlier? No, I was there for three and a half semesters. Oh, three and a half semesters. Three and, and a half that, semesters. That's yeah. how quickly the problem grabbed you then. So I guess that that the the high that you would normally get on the football field was being replaced by the highs with the the gambling and the credit cards and all that. Then, right? It definitely was. Definitely was. Uh, like I said, you know, I wasn't uh, wasn't a part of the you know wasn't on the team for, per se. Um, you know, I was took a medical red shirt, so. 
a lot of things was not required for me as far as like, you know, coming to practices and, you know, watching film or things of that nature. So I was sort of sort of fell on the island to myself, if you will. You know. So were your parents like heavily involved in your life at the time, like as you were younger? Definitely was. My mom and my dad were uh, heavily involved, uh, did, a, did an awesome job, uh, you know. Uh, instilling in me is just you know it was it was me you know uh, I didn't I didn't really um, take everything that I learned up there with me you know because you kind of wonder you know as a young person like I mentioned earlier you know we think we know everything but we don't you know and it's we all have our vices you know and when we all potentially could have our addictions yep, you know yep. so what 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 makes the difference of those that go too far and those that that don't depression is something you know that uh, it masks itself in it. a variety of ways you could be suffering from depression but acting in ways that do not reflect on others as depression yeah. it was just a story in the news over the last uh, few weeks about the uh, the heisman trophy uh, winner from exactly. the, the 90s uh exactly. who just recently committed suicide just down the street from where he played football i think it was denver or mm-hmm. colorado i forget the mm-hmm. gentleman's name but but, yeah, depression has a, a way of just gripping Rashawn people. Salam. Go ahead and throw that over. Rashawn to Salam, which Rashawn. is a player That's you're right. talking to. Yeah, real Sean. And um, I, I think, um, as you mentioned, Kelly, when you're young, there is a sense of invincibility. Right. That, that you know, um, your mistakes can't hurt you, that your acts don't come with consequences. And uh, I, I, I think all of us can look back on certain things we did and uh, and realized the error of our ways now. Uh, with Jamal, uh, not only was he touted as a great player, but uh, he was a youth minister in high school and was very renowned in his church community for his ability to deliver sermons. And, uh, and put in the book together, I talked to someone who used to hear those sermons, and they called him the junior preacher. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Kids, he had a calling way back then. Yeah, you kids know. and adults would come up to him afterwards and, and say, you, you touch my soul, you prick my heart. So, so here's someone who really, you know, externally appears to be on the right path. But well, you know, um, I, I think sometimes you're supposed to go down a certain path, but you may not make those decisions on your own. So sometimes I think a higher power comes in and does even some things that may seem bad to get us on the path that we ultimately need to be on. So, I mean, that, if that gives us some way of looking at the light, in a sense, to, to have some positive closure to it, yep. Yep. you know, maybe, you know, that this, this was your path. So, unfortunately, if you had to go through some of these different pathways and curves and obstacles to get there, you know, so be it. Jamal, made about, it. A, about a minute left. Uh, talk to us about your role today in the community. Well, what I'm trying to do is, you know, another role that I'm doing is I co- also coach, uh, mentor a few kids, and I just try to share my story with them. You know, I try to share all of my experiences. That You know, they look at my highlight tapes. They look at, you know, I bring out the old clips, the old film, you know, the old articles. And so, you know, I, ge- I grab their attention, and they can see, well, man, this, he was pretty good. And then – the next question is what happened, you know, and so that sort of opens up an avenue so for me to talk about some real issues about what really happened to me. And I just try to help them to not go down that same path that I went down. All right. That's Jamal great. Anderson, great story. Thank you so much for sharing thank it today. For and Ernest, thank yeah. you so much for you uh, contributing. Kelly, Jamie, thank you so much. Thank you and again, the best bet available at uh, storefronts at Barnes and Nobles, as well as Amazon and also a Facebook page set up for that. You've been listening to that business show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. I feel guilty that I can't always be there when mom feels stuck at home. She was always there for us. But now she can't get out and I'm not always available to take her places. Someone else needs to help her get around. 
Then I learned about Home Instead. Now mom can do what she enjoys because her personal caregiver is there. And I can just be a daughter again. Are you struggling to care for your loved one? We can help. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. Hi, welcome to Jaegers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Jaegers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Otherwise, we're looking good around the area. No delays to report on I-4 or I-75. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson, Uric, Hillsboro. Traffic tip line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. As a busy parent, taking your child's temperature shouldn't be as stressful as fighting through traffic. With the Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer, one gentle scan of the forehead is all it takes. If only the commute were that easy. Pick one up at your local club warehouse or other fine retailers. Center forecast. Expect a high around 78 degrees today with lows approaching the mid 50s. If you'll be outdoors, make sure to bring an umbrella and bundle up as there's a 50% chance of rain heading into the afternoon. Partly cloudy on Friday with a high of 63, lows approaching the 40s, but will be warming up heading into Saturday with a high around 74. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Miss the show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here are your hosts, Jamie and Kelly. And welcome to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. We're here each and every uh, morning to inspire entrepreneurship, uh, hearing from different community leaders, business leaders, entrepreneurs, people from uh, in and around the uh, community. We'd like to hear your story uh, too. Visit tbsinterview.com and you can fill out a request to uh, come onto the uh, program. Alongside Kelly Wilson, owner of the Edge Business Community and Edge Business Magazine. A great the last morning. segment, by the way. It's very uh, good. Good uh, introduction there to Mr. Uh, Ernest Hooper and uh, Jamal Anderson. So yeah, great yeah. segment right th there as well. So. It was. I, I have followed Ernest uh, over the years and admire his writing. And uh, it was great to bring him on, and I didn't, I did not know Jamal's story, so it was great, to, great to hear that. Good way to start off the uh, day with something Absolutely. inspiring, and that's what that business show is all about: inspiring uh, radio, inspiring podcasting, wherever it is <laughs> that you're uh, listening. And so, take a break from all the political news and sports talk that dominates the airwaves yeah. with uh, community uh, with a store with a show about you know positivity and entrepreneurship. If there's something you want to do, you just go out there and you make it happen. Absolutely, <laughs> that's what we're here to help make sure you do. And also, we made it easier to subscribe to the. Edge Business Magazine, uh, Kelly's uh, Business Magazine. Go to thatbusinessmagazine.com and you can get a free uh, copy of the fall winter issue as well. Get thatbusinessmagazine.com and yeah, subscribe. Yeah, we've got some great things planned for 2017 with Edge. Some great stories uh, that are coming up in the in the 2017 issues of Edge uh, Business Magazine. Yes, so, and the next one is stuff. in planning. And so if you got some ideas for the magazine, get in touch with uh, Kelly over here. You can get in touch with her uh, through the contact form over at tampabayradio.com. I'll put you in touch with her or through uh, thatbusinessmagazine.com as well. Yes, please. Please do. Time to bring in our next guest here for the uh, segment, Dale Neighbors, real estate agent with uh, Coal Banker, a good friend of mine and returning guest to the uh, program. So we talked a little real estate as we're both in that uh, that business after I get off the radio each and every morning. So, Dale, good morning to you. How are you doing today? Good morning, good morning to you Dale. both. So how's, uh, how's uh, you know the real estate business been uh, this year for you? 2000 and uh, what is it, 2016 still? <laughs> it's still 2016. <laughs> A few more days, I guess. Just right? a few more, yeah. Well, actually, it's been very good. Uh, we've, I think, you and I have chatted on a couple of occasions in, in general that we still need inventory. Uh, people really want to come to the Tampa Bay area. We're a pretty dominant place to want to work, live, and play. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you see so much positivity around uh, the community from entrepreneurship, uh, from what's going on downtown, and you know, with uh, everybody just coming to Florida in general. I mean, Tampa really is a is a hidden gem, and just I think Tampa Bay could be so much more. And you know, in real estate, yeah, it's uh, but we need inventory out there right now. I was just on um, uh, Zillow the other day, and I noticed, uh, you know, my home value had jumped tremendously. I don't know if other people out there are seeing the same thing, but what are you noticing out That's there? That's scary and, when that happens doesn't it? It, it jumped only... a lot. I mean, I've been a little bit, a little bit. we know what's to come. Yeah, I've been a little disconnected sure, from to. real estate this year as I developed the radio show and Tampa Bay business owners, although I did have a, you know, still a great year in real estate. But I was, the last few months, I've been a little disconnected from what's going on with the values. And so I'm on Zillow the other day, just punching in the normal stuff that I do and looking. They jumped. What's going on out there, Dale? Yeah, we're seeing, I think, like we said, because we're probably a dominant place for people to want to go, probably, I would think, maybe top 20, 25 places. To relocate so you know that's creating a, the demand type of thing um we i think i just don't want to see one of those like you, we've talked mm -hmm. before the the crazy peaks that we've seen it's good if it goes up but stable but stabilization some kind of a stable amount <laughs> yeah. you know but having said that if if there's not any you know inventory cho excuse me choices for a consumer and you got uh, you know a certain amount of product well then everyone's going to kind of fight over that um, the one thing I keep seeing is uh, I'm hoping they will continue to improve this dilemma is uh, you know the hottest thing still is probably a, a house that's 150 to maybe 300,000 because that's what a lot of people can still qualify and afford right uh, having said that um, a lot of those buyers really would are condo dweller buyers okay meaning they'd prefer to not deal with the yard and maintain all that but the problem Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac still are pretty restrictive on the kind of financing you can get on a condominium right so meaning if you're a house buyer you know if you got you go FHA financing you can you know do three and a half percent down conventional is five percent but on a condo, it might be, you know, 25 percent, maybe See, with 20. the association, sometimes they're not affiliated with the, the, the other programs, right? A lot of the times the association has to be approved through the different FHA and different programs. Is that correct? Yeah, there's many things that happen. Number one, it could have been the uh, originally the developer or the condo association was lazy, and they didn't want to do all the paperwork to get it approved for oh is that what determines whether it. or not it's part of it it's part mm -hmm. of it number the other part is how many renter versus owners are in the building mm -hmm. uh lenders and that's a stat that's kind of hard to get out of those associations sometimes they don't even really have numbers on that they right. don't really know they don't have a way to keep that intact yeah that's been another problem like you said the fact that you know if you got a huge amount of renters you know uh, lenders are kind of concerned you know they don't want just to have renters and not owners in there but from what I've heard is they're trying to make the ratio of renter versus owners a little more lenient, meaning instead of having a, they might even, in, in, I've heard scuttle of 20, or excuse me, 35 to 40 percent owner, and they might a little be more lenient to do uh, some kind of a better loan program. Well, that helps protect the owners too, right? I mean, no, but owners don't typically want the majority to be renters. They would prefer to all be surrounded by owners, I would think, right? right? Is right. the is the problem in the condo market in Tampa more of an inventory problem or is it more of a financing problem? Meaning, are there is there inventory on the market for condominiums in in South Tampa uh, right now versus single family homes, for instance? Uh, I think there's still an inventory problem. Even with the condos, even, there's still a shortage the, yes. of condos. It's yeah. it's not necessarily a financing yeah. problem with the condos, so they're still you know inventory. They, they are still you know because people want to move and live here however it you know there's still probably a bigger inventory of those condo units than i said like the houses because what happens going back to the house if if you only have five percent or you know maybe ten to put down but you really are a condo dweller buyer you're probably going to lean toward buying a house where you're going to be in there fighting with the house buyer so you have two groups of people you know fighting over the same inventory and what does that of course create a demand problem and there's a lack of inventory so those things you're still seeing like I said in that range of 150 to 300,000 you're seeing a demand you might have multiple offers uh, on those properties um, the one thing that I've noticed if I'm on working on the buyer side of a transaction uh, and maybe to brag a little bit where 
uh, properties that had multiple offers, I've actually got our offers in many cases through. How so? Uh, and not always just with the price. Part of it is having all the paperwork done right, okay? Meaning if, if it's a bank-owned, uh, you've dealt with, or even a, a retail seller on the other end, and you had multiple offers laying on the table, and one, they didn't put the addendums, half the form's blank, there's no legal description, you can't tell if it's a cash offer or a loan finance, you know, uh, how, which ones are you going to look at first? Yeah, and I can definitely attest to what Dale says. You'd think as a, as a consumer out there and you're dealing with a real estate professional that they know what they're doing. I've sold 1,600 homes, and I've seen such such hodgepodge when it comes to a contract. So that's an excellent point. Just knowing how to fill out paperwork mm -hmm. properly right. can give your, your client the advantage. Correct. So, I mean, like just a quick example. Let's say you had a 65 Mustang, right? Uh, and you were going to put it up for sale, even if you're going to put it on the corner, uh, you know, with a sign on it. Now, are you going to leave it there with no wheel covers, you know, all muddy and looking bad? Or are you going to polish it up, you know, have all looking shiny? And that's what I mean about the paperwork, uh, meaning polished up, have all the forms, proof of funds, a reasonable yep. down payment. That's why uh, your offer might be, if you had three or four on the table, and yours has all the pieces and it's polished up, that might be one that either the bank or the retail seller is going to look at first, not just price. Um, I can attest even this year that I had one that actually was, I had the listing in that case, and the seller took a, a contract that was less money, but they it was a stronger looking transaction so it's not always just the money yeah presentation speaks highly to the uh the 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 strength of the offer if it's presented poorly it's probably going to fall apart and if you're not coming to the table with you know proof of funds or an approval letter and some you know weak re weekly written contract yeah sellers and the agents that are representing them are saying this isn't going to close i remember like three years ago when i sold real estate and i always would you know yes you have all of those factors but one other thing too you can take even further is the relationship that you can make either with the seller or that's right you know that's representing the home if you have the buyers and that or the or the other agent because if if they if there's multiple offers but they'd rather work with you because you're a pleasure you know you're a great you know person personality and person to be around they'd rather work with you then they'll choose your offer a lot of the times or they'll give you the opportunity to negotiate well i have to agree with that like even when i'm looking in in the mls the the search and i'm looking for a buyer homes there's times where i see who has it listed and i kind of cringe You're like oh no i'm not showing that one <laughs> uh, because you know it's going to be like a, you, you a, know, a yeah. it's going to be a challenge to get the whole thing done and it's tough to begin with so some of those agents that just made things more difficult you know it's not so good well the part i've never understood as long as i've done this is no matter which side you're on if you're working with the buyer or the seller the whole goal is to, you know, make the seller happy on what they're getting and to get a buyer the property they want. So when you get one side or the other being adversarial, I, I've still never understood that because yeah. our goal is to get to the closing table. I, I used to say 10 years was like the max. People needed to retire, many of them, after 10 <laughs> years because they just got cranky after that point. It, it, they don't know, many of them were mean. Yeah. <laughs> and they would come up with problems before the problems even existed. Dale, yeah, where are you uh, uh, working when you're working with your buyers? Where are you? Uh, where are you excited about in Tampa right now? Where are you uh, telling buyers is a good uh, place to buy or a good place to be? Well, I think one that's really amazing is that whole uh, Channel Side area. Okay, uh, the the guy that owns the hockey arena, mm -hmm. yep, Bennett, Jeff Bennick, yep, uh, and now having maybe Gates behind him. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that whole area is going to continue to just change dramatically. Okay. Having them put in the medical school there, yeah, it's uh, you know, now if you've, uh, I've done this with some friends of mine, just the river walk is now, you know, finished, mm -hmm. uh, part of part because I guess that we got a federal grant where pieces were not finished, and now it's a pleasant thing to, to actually do. So, uh, what, Curtis Hicks in the, the park, uh, so meaning there's a lot of things that are pedestrian friendly and it's going to, I think, even get better. Yeah, the downtown Tampa area for you know, many decades has been lacking, but now there's much more investment and much so more vibrant. involvement, much yeah. more vibrancy going on. It'll really definitely uh, reshape uh, the downtown area and also the the real estate uh, values. Dale, how long have you been selling real estate in Tampa Bay now or just in general? Uh, it's probably been 
a little over 35 years. 35 years. So wow. Dale's definitely got some experience to help you out there in the uh, in the Tampa market. So if you use his services, give him a call at 813-679-1117. Again, 813-679-1117. Or visit DaleNeighbors.com. DaleNeighbors.com. Got another segment with him when we come back from the break on That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. What's up, business rock stars? Are you ready to bring out the CEO in you? Join Julianne Nichols, CEO of Focus on You Strategy, every other Friday on That Business Show. She'll be talking with other chief entrepreneurial officers about how they grew their businesses. Remember, you could join the conversation at Focus on You Strategies, Focus Fridays Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. That's facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. Be the CEO of you. Did you know the biggest challenge business leaders face today is creating an engaged and productive workforce culture? Bill Meyer Ham Consulting wants to help you solve this challenge. They will help you transform your workforce culture to produce amazing business results. Call Bill Meyer Ham Consulting at 941 201 4650 today or visit BillMeyerHam.com. That's BillMeyerHam.com. Have a conversation. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-664-2871 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-664-2871 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-664-2871. Rebuild or replace transmission, $3,200. Anti-lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild or replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your manufacturer's warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. Get protection for covered repairs with a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty. Unlike other companies, with Toco, there's no down payment, and the monthly payments are really affordable. Not sure how long you're keeping your car? At Toco, you can pay as you go. Keep your hard-earned cash and call Toco Warranty right now at 800-261-8406 to save big money on covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle, but for about the cost of a tank of gas per month, a Toco plan has your back on expensive covered car repairs. Monthly payments are very affordable. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800 261 800-261-8406. That's 800-261-8406. 800-261-8406. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Missouri and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warrantech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer or dealership. Visit tocowarranty.com for complete terms and conditions. I knew mom wanted to stay at home. It's the center of her family, her life. But helping mom stay in her home while managing mine was just too much. Honestly, it wasn't just about me. Mom didn't want me to be her caretaker. She wanted me to be her daughter. I felt so alone until I found out about Home Instead Senior Care. When we met the people at Home Instead, we just knew they were different. The experience was personal. And most importantly, for Mom and me, I get to be her daughter again. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. At Vane 911, we will help you feel great again. Do you have restless legs, night leg cramps, or ankle swelling? Restless legs, cramping, swelling, and tired heavy legs are often symptoms of hidden vein disease. You do not have to have visible bulging veins to have the symptoms of vein disease. The vein care specialists at Vein 911 are uniquely qualified to evaluate and treat your veins. Are you unhappy with your previous vein treatment? Vein 911 succeeds where others fail. Call Vein 911 today at 855-VEIN-911. That's 855 855- 834-6911 to book your free consultation. Vein 911. We will help you feel great again. Southbound 49th Street, south of Roosevelt, may find some delays near 144th Avenue. That's due to a crash block in a lane there. Northbound 275 between the Howard Franklin Bridge and West Shore. Crash off to the right-hand side near those entrance lanes from Memorial Highway. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson York Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Reminding you to enjoy your time with with friends and family. Enjoy the tailgate party, but whatever you do, drive sober or get pulled over. Patchy, dense fog, then partly sunny, high 78. A cold front late this afternoon brings a 20% rain chance, turning chilly, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny, high 65. 
You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Miss the show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here are your hosts, Jamie and Kelly. Back to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly. Your business become show business. Uh, now, talking about real estate with uh, Dale Neighbors, real estate agent with Codal Banker. Learn more at DaleNeighbors.com. And Dale, uh, you're also the author of the book, uh, Do What Works. Tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, yeah, the, the good part about the book, it's it's one that, you know, I've mentioned a couple times to different people, that it's about 85 pages. So it's not it's something you're going to read uh, and because it does have some good information. It's not going to be scary like an encyclopedia that you just – put on a shelf and not look at. And the whole goal was all this stuff rattling in my head. Uh, you know how we have bucket lists of things to do. Uh, I figure, well, it, maybe it needs to be put together. Uh, and it has been a good, uh, it probably needs to be pushed a little stronger, but it is on Amazon. But it's a great tool when I'm out on appointments because, you know, why not work with the guy that wrote a book? Right. Then just an agent that got their shingle, and that was the end of their. Who's the schooling. book written for? Uh, it's it's actually for buyers and sellers. You know how to decide how to pick an agent. Uh, also, if you're going to put your home on the market, uh, kind of divorce yourself from the house and look at it as though you're going to buy it. You know, drive around the block and look at it. I mean, would you think this house is something you would buy? Right. Because we all get kind of caught up in thinking our house is better than it is but would you want to buy your own house or does it really look rough in the front you know some things that you need to think about you think and it, have you found it easy for sellers to do that it's still they, hard they kind of step <laughs> back a little bit and actually look at something with yeah. that frame of mind but you really need it, it is hard in many cases but i find that 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 if we don't do that when i'm showing homes and i have the buyer side you can tell that the agent has not had that conversation mm -hmm. You know, for many reasons. Number one, you know, you pull up, the, the yard looks crummy, the front door, the mailbox is crooked. Those sound like tiny things, but that's already. Yeah, it's definitely in the seller's best interest to, to, to listen to you. That's yeah. why they're hiring you. Yeah. How do you use your book to promote your business? Because we talk about, you know, just in general entrepreneurship uh, talks about using books to grow your business. It maybe is a free, you know, uh, uh, value to, you know, collect an email list and to, you know, lead generation. How are, have you been using your book in your business? Uh, I've actually used it like when I go to different events instead of just, you know, even it might cost a little more to hand a book out. And, of course, you've got to be a little selective. But it's kind of neat when you go to an event, you kind of build a rapport with some people. You hand them a book versus a business card. You can even see a change in their whole attitude about that, meaning that maybe now they think that you really know something about what you do. Than someone just you know you know doing a card like a it's a, well, it's a way to separate yourself right so it does help in that manner you know to use it you know that tool like like I said or when you're sitting in the conference room with a, a buyer and you want to build rapport um, you know my goal when I do that with a buyer is to sit there and I have actually made a new buyer book you know in, in the sense not just the book that I wrote but meaning something to to hand them. Uh, so it separates you from someone else, you know, to, to just kind of look like you're kind of. Like you know what you're doing. Right. And yeah, how many years? Did you say 35 or 25? 30, 35. Yeah, after, after 35 years, it makes you, you know, helps, helps you look like you know what you're doing. Right. You know, <laughs> but you can see That's just from time. that, I, did, I have seen a, like I said, a change in attitude when you said, and you kind of make a little fun about it, you know. Uh, you know, why not Why not pick the guy that wrote the book versus just the guy off the street? Right. Now, we talked earlier about the inventory problem that we're having in uh, Tampa Bay, and I think uh, pretty much across the country, a lot of different markets are having inventory issues. Talk to the sellers directly about why they should be selling their homes now. What uh, do you see on the horizon? Why should somebody want to sell their home now if they're considering selling? Well, I think now multiple reasons, just the lack of inventory. So a buyer would pick their home at versus, you know, uh, they're going to probably get the top dollar for it. Uh, I don't know how much longer these interest rates, which to me have been for many years artificially low, uh, you know, how long can that stay at this level? You right. Know, meaning that that's just something's got to change. So, you know, uh, one thing I've noticed, if the rates start scooting up a little bit, people as the buyer side, 
might get off their rear end, so to speak, and actually do something. So it might be the time to get that home listed so you have that bar you know, that bar to pick from. Well, a lot of times uh, the interest rates have been so record low, is I've, I've thought, because uh, that it's been harder to qualify, right, for financing. So the interest rates are lower because not everybody is qualifying for that anyway. It, is it? Have you found that it's easier now or or that the qualifications have eased up some? Well, there's a the little years? of both. Uh, I think after what happened with the debacle years ago, you know, if you had the pendulum, it, we got we were so loose you know, you could breathe in a mirror and they gave you a loan, right. truly. I mean, yeah. and they and they were, they called them stated income loans. I right. called them liar loans. Right. Okay? No Which income. Is, whatever you said, that's what they wrote down. So that was a kind of a problem. I'm seeing a little of that creep back in, which I really would rather not see that. Because then you're going to get the whole problem where people that are going to get these houses that really have no business buying them. If you recall when we had the car thing where it was cash for clunkers, uh, I talked to a guy I knew um, that did the financing on cars, and the fallacy of that is it sounds cool. You can get this car. Maybe they're going to give you a credit for your old car. But remember that old junker you own free and clear. Now you have a car payment. Well, you know, 60, 90 days later, all these cars are being repoed. So it's the same thing we have to watch same for the house. I'll give sellers another uh, reason to uh, consider selling their home soon is, you know, in 2012, which was the uh, the uh, bottom part of the market when all the hedge funds came in and started scooping up all these homes, that's a large reason why there's not a lot of inventory on the market, too. They've turned a lot of properties into rental homes, and they're waiting for these values to come up. So at any point, probably in the next few years, those hedge funds, the the, the Blackstones and the Frios and uh, Progress and all those people, they're going to start dumping those homes, and it's going to create more inventory on the market, which will then bring the values down, and they have a lot of properties they bought up a lot of stuff in 2012 and 2013 so and when that happens values will start to go back down dale good discussion this morning thank you so much for being in the studio all right thanks thank both you dale. For having again real happy st- holidays real estate thank agent uh, 35 years of experience good friend of mine also working with the uh, Coldwell banker brand is what i do as well give him a call if you could use his uh, services whether you're buying or selling a home 813-679-1117 again 813-679-1117 or visit dale neighbors.com learn more about this program at tampabayradio.com and also we've made it easier to uh, find and share uh, different uh, programs across social media if you visit that business show Dot com and subscribe to the Edge Business Magazine by visiting thatbusinessmagazine.com. You've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie and Kelly, where business becomes show business. 